Hi everybody. Now that we can move our player around, it's time to start shooting some lasers. Now I'm going to keep it simple in this video, just shooting one laser at a time, and in a later video we'll handle firing multiple lasers. To get started, you can check out part three tag of the repo, or you can just visit it here by master tags and download it directly. You will need to grab one of the assets, so we're going to need a sprite for the laser image. So in the master branch, you could go to the, um, the folder for assets and just download it and put that in your code. And then you'll be able to use that when we compile. So that'll be over on, uh, let's see, in this assets folder right here. And that's what the image looks like. Okay, back to our main. So you can follow along in the guide. Uh, the first thing we want to do is take the part of our code where we're creating our entities. So right now we're just creating a player. Now, normally I don't move something like this out of the main flow uh, unless, you know, I don't really need to refer to it very often. It's kind of a do it once and forget it type of thing. Um, then I can move it out. And this is going to start getting a little bit bigger now that we're also adding an entity for our laser. So I will cut this out completely. Just copy this and we'll replace this with a new uh, procedure called create entities. And we'll just do this right at the bottom. Uh, create entities. This is a uh, procedure. And we'll just paste that in there. I can remove these comments. And from the guide, you just scroll down a little bit. You can just copy that code right out uh, and paste it down below. Uh, let's walk through it. So just like loading our player texture, uh, we load our texture for the bullet red 2, great name, I know, and we assert that it indeed was created. And this will fail if, uh, for example, you forget to put that image in, in the code in the assets folder, then you'll uh, get a nice error string in your console. It'll tell you what you're missing. We query the texture to get the width and the height, just like with the player. I don't really want to inspect the file itself and hard code the height and the width. It's better just to get it this way. And it's a little bit big, so I do reduce it by, by three. Uh, and you can play around with the sizing as you like. And then I create the entity right here. Now the entity is stored on the game struct, just like with player. And it's a laser field. So I want to add that. We have our player stuff here. Maybe here I'll do our laser stuff. And the first thing we'll add is our layer laser entity. Now I also added a health field to the entity struct. Uh, this is new. And I'm going to use this just to keep track of whether or not I should render the laser once it goes off screen. So we're always firing to the right side. Once it goes off of the window, then I can reset the health to zero and then it's available to fire again. Now I'll have to add it to our player struct, uh, player entity as well. And I'll just put 10 in there. It doesn't really matter. We're not doing anything with that just yet. So let's add that health and it's integer to our entity struct. Now what's next? Firing our laser. So just like with our movement, uh, we got our state from the keyboard right here. So we set our left, right, up and down flags on our game struct. Let's set another Boolean for fire. And we'll fire our laser uh, with the space bar. You, know, you can choose anything you want, of course. So this will be scan code space, all caps. So if the space bar is pressed, then it's um, we know that we're firing our laser and then we'll have to render our laser accordingly. So let's go down. After we move our player around, this is where we can check if we're firing our laser and that the health of the laser is zero, which means that it's off screen. It's, it's made its complete journey to the end uh, and it's available to fire again. Now the starting position for the laser, uh, of course we want the laser to look like it's firing from our player. So we take our current position, the current position of the player and of the X and the Y, and that's where we set our laser starting position. I increase it by 30 pixels because if I'm flying forward and fire, I don't want the laser to look like it's firing from the rear of the ship. I still want it to look like it's firing in the front. So that's why I set this right here. This number would be affected by the speed of your player as well and the speed of the laser itself uh, so you can play around with that and, and do what you think is best and when we do fire we set the health to one that means it's activated now and we should render it later on now if it goes off a screen this code comes in uh, if the destination x so the current 
position of the X is greater than the window width, that means it's off screen, and we should set the health to zero again. And if the health is greater than zero, so if it's one, then that means we should be rendering it. And how much should we move? So we have our starting position that was set just above here based on the player's position. And we should move by a delta motion just like we do with our player. Now I've created this new procedure called get delta motion because we're using it here with the player and we're going to use it again for the laser and other things as well, not just these guys, but also the enemies when we get to that point. We always want the movement to be independent of the frame rate. And that's why we use that. So let's rip that out a little bit and make a new procedure for it. We'll call it get delta motion procedure. And this will return something. This will return a float. This will return a new position, right? Paste that in there. Return this, but we won't return the player speed every time. This will be another speed that we'll pass in. And speed will be a float, just like that. Now, with Rust, I believe this uh, the syntax is the same. It's been a while since I've written some Rust, so I can't quite remember. But when we return a value, we can use a little arrow like that, and then the the type of uh, the the value of um, or the type of the return value we put right here. So we use get delta motion to get our our laser speed and or rather our rate our uh, the movement for the laser, and we pass in the laser speed. Now I don't have that set yet. I'm going to set it down below the player speed. And rather than 500, I kind of liked uh, the 700 speed. But again, it's uh, whatever you like. Now I will replace what we're doing here uh, for the player. Uh, delta uh, motion. Uh, and not the player, the laser speed, but the player speed. There. So I just want to replace that. Now I don't change it to an F to an I32 here yet. I do that in uh, move player. Let me see. Yeah, that takes an, X, uh, an F64. So I just want to not convert that just yet. All right, so that's delta motion there, delta motion here. Then we render our laser. And am I forgetting anything? Nope. So let's compile that and see what it looks like. Load and run. There we go. So we can still move our player around. And as soon as you hit the space bar, there we are firing our laser. So if you move forward and fire, it still looks like it's coming from the front. And you can only fire one at a time for now. But that's a good start. Now for a challenge for the next time before I get around to it, releasing the next video, uh, see if you can figure out a way to fire multiple lasers. Little hint, uh, my solution anyway, was to use a fixed array. So you can use an array perhaps to store a number of lasers. And uh, I won't give you any more hints, try and figure it out. If you do figure something out and you'd like to share, please put it in the comments. I'd like to see it. Maybe it ends up uh, being quite different than my implementation, which would be great. I've seen a lot of different ways to do this sort of thing. Um, and it'd be great to learn and uh, see what you guys come up with. So let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and we'll see you the next time.